What is up everyone, Jay here with another Fire Emblem Heroes video and today we're going to take a look at the last Legendary Hero banner of 2023 and this time it features Legendary Camilla. So I expected her to happen at some point, you know, she was going to get her time, but especially because December has always ended with a female character pretty much. It's happened since 2018, 2018 we had Legendary Azura, 2019 we had Legendary Celica, 2020 we had Legendary Lelina, 2021 we had Legendary Female Violet, 2022 we had Legendary Female Chez, and now we have Legendary Camilla for 2023. So this time she's, she is a green tome flyer. This is actually her second green tome flying version after her spring version, I believe. And she's a water pair up. And you guys know, if you guys know me, I'm not a huge fan of Camilla. I'm not a fan of Camilla at all, but um, I do like this alt in terms of design. She looks great. I mean, the dress is cool. I don't know if it's based off anything, um, but uh, they definitely went pretty nice with this Camilla design. And, um, you know, She's actually pretty strong. Um, she's stronger than I thought at first glance because, I mean, you can already tell by the battle forecast. Look at how much damage she's dealing to this <laughs> poor Sword Knight. She's already doing 22 damage for free before even doing anything. And we're familiar with this thanks to Flared Sparrow, Occult of Strike and stuff. So this, uh, you know, before combat begins, essentially, this, uh, you know, chip damage is kind of getting crazy at this point. So she can do that and really do it the best. So Bewitching Tome is her weapon, gives her Canto 1 and minus 1 cooldown. If unit initiates combat, her force range equals 2. As combat begins, that is the key word right there, deals damage to foe equals X percentage of foe's attack. If unit has weapon triangle advantage or speed is greater than the foe, X equals 40, otherwise X equals 20. So basically she uses the foe's attack against them and then uses that as chip damage, which is crazy. So that's how she's doing 22 chip damage to that sword knight and uh, effects that reduce damage during combat do not apply so you know spurn close call that's not going to affect it because that only stops you know the real hits you know it doesn't stop the chip damage beforehand and also keep in mind it will not kill the foe it only does damage to them so if they have one hp you know they're not actually going to you're not actually going to kill them with it which is good but still the fact that you're dealing that much damage and in a game like Fey, where you know most units have like 40 to 50 hp um that's a lot of chip damage so yeah and uh, if you need initial combat or foes range equals two grants plus five to all stats the unit grants bonus to attack and speed equal to 20 percent of unit speed at start of combat and you reduce damage from the foes first attack by 30 percent and then after that or actually during combat you restore or sorry no foes first attack by 30 percent during combat and you restore seven hp after combat i thought it was I thought 7 HP was during combat, but yeah. So you take away um, the crazy chip damage. The weapon's not that crazy, but the chip damage part is what makes it insane. And uh, yeah, we've seen this kind of with Golvig because she has Flared Sparrow, Cult of Strike. You can run that in other units. You know, Yunaka has, can do it too. Um, but the fact that she can do this just with her weapon, I mean, you can run Flared Sparrow as well in the A, I guess. But it's going to be interesting because, you know, you have Flared Sparrow and she also has a new Divine Bane effect that she run in the C, so I'm not sure how that would interact but um yeah just tons of chip damage and uh you know it's kind of broken honestly because there's no counter to that right now and you'll see after this she um, some more footage of how it works um so yeah that's her tome draconic aura is her special remote sparrow is her a which is good because it stacks with a damage reduction in her weapon and she's very fast it's interesting too because camilla has like different stat spreads um she's either really fast or she's really slow like her ninja version um so yeah and spoiled rotten is her prfb skill this is also really good because it gives some support. So at start of turn, if you're alive, you inflict speed res minus seven and sabotage on closest foes and any foe within two spaces of those foes through their next actions and also grants the percentage of foes non-special reduced damage by X skills by 50% to unit and allies. So we've seen damage reduction, you know, support like on a legendary leader's dragon blast. But with that, you have to trigger your special and you also have to have support ally. But here... You can have the damage reduction without having to have a support ally, and she can also give it to herself, which is huge because flying mages don't have access to magical no follow up. So the fact that Camilla here can give it to anybody and also give it to herself is really good. And also, at the start of combat, if you're alive, you inflict speed res minus five on the foe, and you also neutralize you have partial no follow up, and you also have no guards. So Spoiled Rotten is really good, not only for the support, but also just for Camilla to help her, you know, just new Carter on top of the crazy chip damage she can do. Um, so sabotage is good support and uh, also giving the, you know, the magical, the damage reduction halving effect is really cool as well. So that's her B skill. Spoiled Rotten is a perfect name because, you know, she's the doting older sister that likes to spoil people rotten. And then we go to the C skill Deadly Miasma, which is going to be inheritable. We don't know the uh, restrictions on it, but I'm kind of hoping it's only available for flyers because this skill is kind of crazy. Um, 
because of the chip damage and at this point because of Kimmel I feel like the the chip damage is kind of getting out of hand so hopefully next year we get like a counter to this um, you know as combat before combat chip damage thing happens but anyways deadly miasma if you initiate combat inflicts minus 5 debuff on the foe and you also neutralizes their bonuses so um, you know you stop stuff like fortify rally etc during combat and after combat deals 7 damage to target and foes within 2 spaces of target and applies divine vein haze so divine vein, vein, divine vein haze uh, is going to neutralize the bonuses and you also have a minus 5 debuff on the foe so um, this is really good because it's um just basically going to cripple people and especially units that rely on buffs such as brave marth or luxury marth so this kind of hurts for me but in general being able to stop buffs is always good and um you know this is the interesting interaction because you run this skill with uh flared sparrow i don't know which divine vein will come out first because i don't know if the flared not flared sparrow the uh divine vein flame is going to come out first or the divine vein haze i'm not sure that'll be interesting to see but yeah deadly miasma is really crazy because it stacks with the chip damage that she can already do and uh yeah so tons of chip damage and you'll see it in the footage how much damage she can really do like just doing it for free essentially is kind of it just feels like cheating <laughs> uh, especially because we don't have any counter to it so as you can see this sword knight is going to just eat 22 damage before combat even starts and now he's weakened to just die i mean he was going to die anyway but still um you know like i said in a game like favor hp isn't that high at the end of the day like 40 to 50. um this is insane so this for right here is going to eat 22 damage and then just die the next hit so um i mean he's probably going to die anyway but still like this is insane so camilla you know i think she's going to be strong especially on like aether raids chaos because she is a legendary hero so you can't use her every aether raid season but um, when aether raids chaos and stuff you have to watch out for her because she can just deal an insane amount of damage without actually having to do anything here's the seer and you, you can see he she takes it before you know she can even throw an attack and now she's dead so yeah that is legendary camilla and her whole thing of dealing tons of chip damage so i guess you know it's also funny because it's divine vein haze and it stops foes buffs just like in pokemon where haze stops uh, the foes buffs as well but yeah let's look at the rest of the heroes on the banner we have medius we have asker we have legendary deirdre we have legend veronica we have legendary or sorry brave robin brave soren we also have brave Golvig, brave corin so we have cyl8 rerun coming and then we have Legendary Lear, Legendary Lincia, and Red Tosker, who was just on the Awakening banner. So uh, looking at the colors, I feel like green is really good because you have Legendary Lear, um, Legendary Camilla, you have Brave Soren, who are pretty good units. Brave Soren being, I'd say he's a pretty meta unit because of the sign decoy. Magical no follow-up is really good to have as always. Camilla's really good. Um, Legendary Lear is also one of the best nukes. So I feel like green is the best. Look at, uh, let's look at red. Legendary Lincia is one of the best sword flyers. Legend of Veronica, even though she's kind of gotten worse a little bit, she's still very good, in my opinion. And Brave Robin, who's one of the best. I think he's a top five sword infantry right now. So red, I'd say, is also very stacked. Green, you have... or I went over green already. Blue has uh, Brave Goldvig, um, Legend of Deirdre, and Red Tosker. So it's a little bit worse because of Legend of Deirdre, but she's still, you know, a good mage uh, tank. And then colorless, we have Asker, Medius, and Brave Corrin. So I think green is the best, red is second best. Uh, Carlos is third best and then green maybe or blue sorry blue is probably the last one but Ratatoskr is still really good she also provides you know her own divine vein as well um, but Carlos maybe Carlos actually works because Asker maybe has kind of fallen off a little bit as a light mythic I mean he's still good and a good combat unit in my opinion but Medius you know he's still always good as a dark mythic because of Engard and um, speaking of Engard I always thought Engard for a while I thought Engard stopped you know flared sparrow chip damage but it doesn't because in guard only stops out of combat and in guard and the, the the shenanigans camilla does is still technically in combat because it happens when the animations happen so yeah and guard actually doesn't stop it which made me sad so hopefully next year we get a unit that stops all this chip damage stuff because it's kind of getting out of hand with camilla because like the fact that she can just cheese you and deal that much damage before you even do anything is some cheese so and we have no way to counter it so yeah uh, she's gonna be a fun unit to fight but uh you know using her in arena if you get her she's gonna make things a breeze because she can just you know just basically kill them essentially and you know she's her without even without that she'd still be strong but you know 
that's really what makes her good so yeah that is the legendary banner let me know what you guys think down below um i'm definitely actually i don't know i might summon on it because i want a legendary leer merge it'd be nice to get a camilla myself but i'm not a fan of camilla so i feel like i should just save for new years in case it has something good and for next year because i have a lot of projects i want to try to finish off merges for um but yeah that's legendary banner leave a like if you guys enjoyed good luck on your summons if you're pulling please stay safe out there peace out